Often we lake boat nuts tend to see a picture of a great looking old wooden lumber hooker and we focus on admiring the beauty of her lines. We admire the details of her construction, the woodwork of her cabins, the ornate lettering of her name. Every detail is candy. Yet, we tend to overlook these guys. They were as key to the lumber vessels as any feature of the boat's construction, because without them, this class of vessels would have had a vastly diminished function. They were the dock wallopers. Also seen published as wallopers and wallopers. This slang moniker of the lumbering era on the lakes is correct in any spelling because they all referred to the exact same group of workers. And everyone in those days knew the meaning. They were also often called lumber shovers. Lumber is one of the only two lake cargoes that never had its loading or unloading process completely mechanized, while other such cargoes as iron ore, coal, stone, and grain saw their labor of loading and unloading switch from being done by hand to being done by machines. The grain huffers and the ore scoopers found themselves no longer needed because the darts legs and the hullets came along and took over their job. Yet the dock wallopers remained a critical component in the lumber industry. These were largely immigrant laborers, and their workday extended from the first light of day until the last light of dusk. Loading and unloading was not done at night because there were no lights at the docks. Generally, each dock had a, quote, boss, unquote, and that boss had a, quote, gang, unquote, of lumber shovers, most of whom he trusted as good workers. The work clothes of a dock walloper were somewhat interesting. Take a look at these fellows, loading the Langell boys in Saginaw, Michigan. The first thing you'll notice is the leather apron. Keep in mind that the lumber in those days was thick, long, heavy, and had sharp edges. A single workday could easily wear large gashes in the legs of a man's work trousers. This was not an era when men's pants were mass-produced overseas and then sold at a discount price at Walmart. So this leather apron was a good investment and great protection. Speaking of protection, notice no one on this crew is wearing gloves. Likewise, no one on this gang in Menominee, Michigan has gloves. Calluses are inexpensive. Another interesting fact is that there were eventually different classes of dock wallopers. The unions divided the gangs into lumber shovers and lumber stowers. The job of lumber shover required no prior experience. Yet the job of lumber stower required a great deal of experience. This was due to the fact that lumber hookers needed to be properly loaded so that the movement of the boat out on the open lake would not cause the stacks of lumber to shift. As a result, the lumber stowers could make nearly twice the hourly wage as the lumber shovers. By 1912, the lumber industry had rapidly faded from the Great Lakes as the forests were clear-cut to nothing. 